Hello. Uh, today we will talk about population related issues. The first issue is uh, the fertility rate, the declining global fertility rate issue. Uh, here is the uh, changes in the fertility rate, that's the number of children per woman uh, in the world from 1950s through uh, 2040s. As you see, it used to be about five children per woman back in 1950s. Now it's been dropping to uh, less than uh, 3.0 as of uh, 2015 worldwide. And main thing is this sharp decline in the fertility rate among uh, developing countries, which used to be six in the 50s and 60s, half a century ago. Now it's around, uh, it's less than three uh, as of 2015. Uh, whereas the uh, fertility rate in the developing, developed countries has been fairly low all along. And actually, it's been uh, less than 2.0 that's a kind of simple reproduction level. Now it's backing up to uh, 2.0. So there's a kind of convergence in the fertility rate among various countries in the world. But what caused this uh, decline in the fertility rate, uh, especially among developing economies? Uh, causes include several things. First, education. Uh, not just the family planning type of education, but all kinds of education which uh, makes people uh, think more about family planning wisely. And the, uh, also educating children will involve uh, cost, time cost, otherwise, so people are more careful in having more children. Economic growth, the better living uh, condition, uh, per capita income increase that will lead to uh, fewer children, as we know, and urbanization. Now, as people migrate from rural to urban, they don't have too many uh, children, as in they, are in the, they were in the rural areas. Uh, contraception and other family planning methods now widely available. So all these factors have contributed to the uh, global decline in the fertility rate. How do you see this trend? Now here are two opposing views regarding declining global fertility rate. Some say that's a good thing because that's been associated with better conditions in the economy, education, and women's rights for family planning. And better conditions in these areas will further reduce the uh, uh, fertility rate. It's a you know, uh, good circle. Some other people say it's a bad thing because low fertility rate means uh, you know, the low growth of population, even less population which will lead to a few young people and the uh, shrinking labor force and eventually uh, there will be an aging phenomenon which means economic stagnation and the decline. This could be serious in the case of uh, developing economies with still uh, you know, a low income. This uh, controversy opposing views for be repeated again and again in the population related issues. Uh, for example, the issues we have already studied regarding convergence versus divergence in the world economy and also inequality and poverty. Uh, side A says that the large population is a good thing because that will give more resources, like human resources, more young people, to help the economy overcome various difficulties, such as vicious so-called or middle income trap, and to push the economy further 
uh, which means convergence in the global economy. Whereas side B, against large population, says that the well, large population means low per capita income. Per capita income uh, is really lower because the denominator population is large. So that will mean more poverty, more inequality, that means a divergence in the global economy. So that's the uh, difference in opinion. The, uh, regarding the population and the environment, we see a similar kind of uh, opposing views. Side A, in favor of large population, says large population will give more resources for further development and leading to cleaner industry and more efficient use of energy. Whereas the uh, side B says uh, large population will mean more pollution and that's not permissible, so population control will be needed. So, the, so that's the uh, side B argument. Okay. Which side to take is up to you.